Hi, I'm Marna, and this is the Twin Flame Detox. And yes, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do lighting now because everything makes me look glowy. So, <laughs> I guess this is one of my side effects of being in 5D. So, there we go. All right, so today we're talking about, of all things, shadow and shadow work. Now, I know you've heard the term. If you have been working with the spiritual community, spirituality, and understanding twin flame consciousness at all, you've heard the term shadow work. You've been told you need to deal with your inner shadow as part of healing your core wounding. We've all heard this. But what does it actually mean? Now, if you are looking at Jungian psychology, Yes, I'm going back to Carl Jung for this because Jung is the one who brought the term shadow work from Eastern methodologies of thought and into Western methodologies of thought. So we do owe a bit to him. So if you are dealing with Jungian psychology, then the shadow is the part of you that you ignore or repress or wish wasn't there. It is that part of you that you are shoving off into a corner so you don't have to deal with it. And once it's shoved off into a corner, you just kind of brick it up like the, in the cask of Amontillado where, you know, he shoved the guy into the wall and bricked up the wall. That's what we try to do with our shadow self. Now, that does have repercussions. And those repercussions can take place in ways that we do not expect. In my personal life, one of the shadows that I had the hardest time dealing with was the shadow caused by something I didn't even remember happening. When I was an infant, I was the victim of some childhood sexual molestation. I'm not saying that to get sympathy. Please don't think that I am. But since I was the victim of this crime, it had effects on my personality. Now, as I grew up, I didn't remember this. This happened before I could speak. Actually, my abuser later told me he had stopped when I started speaking simply because he did not want to risk being outed. Yes, I have talked to my abuser about this. We've worked it out between us. It's okay. So, there's this part of me. There's this thing that happened to me. And this thing that happened in my life helped define my perception of the way love and affection should be shown. Even though I didn't remember it, that core building block was put in. That little bit of miscoded programming was wired in up here. To an infant, you have to remember how much of your programming is done by a specific event is determined by how much that, that event affects your conscious life and by what percentage of your lifespan is spent experiencing that event. When something happens in your first year of life, that becomes a huge percentage of your lifespan. So, this event happened in my childhood and it shaped me. It shaped me in ways that I did not know. When I got to being a teenager, this plus a few other childhood events had me craving masculine attention. When I got to college, this expressed itself as hypersexuality. And it wasn't until I went to therapy for the hypersexuality that the, ther the therapist, who was a Jungian psychologist, identified the event that was the root of so many things that came after. So that's an example of, a sh of an unacknowledged shadow affecting an entire life. So there we go. That's what shadow is in Jungian psychology. Now then, on the spiritual side, when your shadow becomes repressed, then you start shutting down the portions of your energetic field that, so, that are affected by that shadow. It was very hard for me to experience non-sexual love for people or non-physical affectionate love because of the shadow and it wasn't until i dealt with the shadow 
that I started developing the ability to truly feel into my heart and feel the unending wellspring of love that I get to live in now. So, according to Jung, when a child is given a truth by a caregiver that an aspect of themselves is not acceptable, the child's immediate response is to attempt to please the caregiver by removing that aspect of themselves. And that is when your shadow is created. So think about it for a minute. How many times as a child did you hear, big boys don't cry? Nice girls don't do that. Be seen and not heard. The more you internalized those statements from your caregivers, your adults, your parents, the stronger your shadow grew. And as you grew into adulthood, the more you attempted to repress that shadow, the stronger that shadow grew. So if you grew up with the concept of proper young ladies, this is one that I had. Now please keep in mind, my mother never left the 1950s. But proper young ladies do not go out and address young men first. Proper young ladies do not put themselves out there. Proper young ladies sit in the background and keep the household running flawlessly without ever voicing their own needs, wants, or desires. How's that for a handful? That, of course, created a shadow side because the part of me that was screaming out, no, my needs, wants, and desires are perfectly valid. I am a human being. I have you know, certain inalienable rights, and I deserve for my needs, wants, and desires to be heard by the person who claims to love me. That shadow side came into existence. That shadow side blocked my throat chakra for years, which led to, um, of all things, asthma because my breathing would get constricted. That shadow side, yes, sh shadow sides do create physical effects. That shadow side appeared in my first marriage because it ended up with me married to, quite honestly, a diagnosed sociopath who took advantage of that belief that I should not be seen, heard, or validated. Shadow sides affect every aspect of your life. It wasn't until I had children and I began speaking up on their behalf that I began even acknowledging that that shadow side existed. So, we all have shadows. We all need to confront our shadows, work through them, and not destroy them. Bring them into us. We need to integrate that part of us. The part of me that was screaming out, hey, I deserve to be heard, I deserve to be heard, seen, acknowledged, respected, that part of me is a very valid sentiment. That part of me is a very healthy sentiment. There's no reason for me to destroy it just because I had repressed it. What I had to do, and actually making these videos is a part of doing it, I had to look at the shadow. I had to look at what had created it. And then I had to open my eyes to it and say, I see you, I hear you. You are a part of me, you are welcome, you are loved. Now this sounds really, really simple. It took a lot of inner work and a lot of meditation to get to that point. But that was the basic process of it. So, how do you identify when you have shadows, and yes, this is going to be a long video, I probably should have warned you, but how do you identify what your shadow is? You know you have it. How do you quantify it? How do you say, this is my shadow? How do you say, this is the core wound that created this shadow? Well, the first thing you do is you look at your own behavior. As I mentioned, the shadow that related to my childhood abuse came through as hypersexualization as an adult. So I had gone to a therapist because 
quite honestly, my boyfriend at the time was complaining that I wanted too much from him. I was demanding too much physical affection, too much everything. And I went to a therapist for it. And the therapist was the one who identified that shadow. But he identified it because he looked at my behavior patterns. My behavior patterns showed a behavior that was outside of the accepted norm. And in exploring that outside the accepted norm is how we discovered exactly what the shadow was. So that's one way of finding it out. Another way of finding out what your shadow is, is to sit down with a journal. And I know a lot of people don't like sitting down with a pen and paper journal because it feels like you're back in grade school. Go back to grade school, it's not gonna hurt you. You sit down with your journal and you ask yourself some very simple questions. What do I dislike about myself? What do I dislike in the people closest to me? Where do I feel I am not heard? Now, the, one of the key questions in that is, what do you dislike about those closest to you? Because one thing we tend to do subconsciously, we don't realize we do this, we project what we see as our shadow onto other people. Now in the twin flame relationship, you really see this. Your twin is sitting there as a bright shining mirror of, hey, here's your shadow work. Pay attention to this. And we tend to ignore it because you know, we're going through that blissful honeymoon stage. The shadow that my twin showed me was the shadow of abandonment. So going back into personal stories again, when I was four years old, my mother is very, very ill. And my father, bless his heart, full-time military, three teenage sons, and a four-year-old daughter. And it was more than he could handle on his own. So his method of dealing with it, because remember, his wife was hospitalized. He had been told his wife was dying. Don't worry, she's she is currently 89 years old and still kicking, so don't worry about her. But... She was doing a very risky surgery. She had a 50-50 chance of actually surviving the surgery. And he had been told that the surgery would buy her, at most, six months. So you have a man who is facing the loss of the love of his life. You have a man who's dealing with three teenage boys who are all in various stages of trauma because they are old enough to understand what's happening to their mother. And you have a four-year-old who isn't aware of what's going on. And, you know, being a girl required demands. He really didn't know how to meet. I remember he used to braid my hair in pigtails in the morning, and he would pull it so tight that I had problems seeing. But he was doing the best he could. So when school let out that year, you know, this was kindergarten year for me. I started early. He decided the best thing would be for me to be in a slightly more stable environment while so much turmoil was going on at home, and he took me to stay with relatives. Unfortunately, no one bothered to tell me what was going on. So from my perspective as a child, my father took me to my cousin's birthday party in another state, and during the party I looked up and saw him driving away. He didn't say goodbye because he didn't want to create a dramatic event. Not realizing I'd see him pulling out of the parking lot. That created a shadow. And it was the shadow of abandonment. As you can see, this is something that I still process through. I still work through the details of this. And I'm still feeling it in my third chakra. That choked up feeling that you get, that is your throat chakra trying to close up because you are voicing a truth that makes you uncomfortable. So, my father abandoned me at my cousin's birthday party. He had his reasons. His reasons were valid to him. He was doing the best he could. He did not mean it to be a major event. 
However, I spent the next two months spending a week here, a week there, as my relatives shuttled me around through the family. I got to know a lot of cousins that I didn't really know very well because I'd only seen them at Christmas parties. But it was still, you know, very hard on a small child because no one would tell me what was going on. No one thought I was old enough to understand what was going on, so no one even tried. So, I go through this horrible traumatic event for two months when I'm four years old. And remember, percentage of lifespan does help determine how much a trauma shapes you. So two months when you're four years old is a much larger percentage of your lifespan than two months when you're 50. This trauma became a foundational part of my personality. I became terrified of being abandoned. And that core wound of the abandonment was responsible for my development into a people pleaser. It was responsible for my development of feelings that I was not worthy of love, attention, affection, whatever. All the things that should have been freely part of my life. And again, that all shaped large portions of my personal history. So, when my twin came into my life, what he reflected back at me was this unhealed trauma of being abandoned. And he reflected this back at me by telling me from the beginning that he was going to be seeing other women that I could like it or leave it, that if I wanted him in my life, I had to accept this aspect of him. And I did. I ended up marrying him anyway. And he ended up doing the one thing I feared most, which was to leave me for one of his others. I am not casting any aspersions on people who choose to be in polyamorous relationships. If it works for you, fantastic. But when you're dealing with an unhealed abandonment issue, It does cause problems, especially if the partner who is being actively polyamorous is also discounting the abandonment issues that are being triggered by those actions. So here I am in a relationship with the love of my life, being abandoned over and over and over, gone overnight, gone for a weekend never knowing when it's going to happen. I would come home from work, he'd be dressed up, he'd say bye. Um, When I told him I needed a schedule of what nights he was going to be out, so I knew how many people to do frost dinner for, I was told I was destroying his spontaneity. So again, that pulled into that whole abandonment issue. My needs, my wants, my desires were not worthy of consideration because it impinged on his ability to go out and do as he pleased. Which goes into his own issues because I was mirroring his fear of a loss of freedom. So here I am going, hey, I would like a little bit more structure in our lives, which terrified him. And he's going, hey, I'm not going to be there for you, which terrified me. We were mirroring our fears at each other, which is what twins do. So once he left, I was forced into facing the shadow of myself. I was forced into saying, this is my fear. This is how I manifested this fear into my life. I thought about it too much. I brought it in. I created this situation on an energetic level. Now that does not in any way excuse his behavior or the things he chose to do. His choices are his choices. But energetically, I manifested a situation of being abandoned because energetically I needed to face that fear. And again, lots of therapy, lots of meditation, lots and lots and lots, about two years worth of inner work to get to a point where I could comfortably say, this is my fear. This is my shadow. This is what I am working through. And like I said, it is still a work in progress. I'm far from perfect. So, the projection that I had was that I deserved to be abandoned. And that is why I projected it onto my twin and what he showed back to me. And that has turned out, when I sat down and really looked at it, 
It was a pattern through multiple relationships before my twin, or in the periods between the two, the two major times when I dated my twin. Again, again and again and again, I was cheated on and abandoned, which combined those two core wounds, the hypersexuality. Do you have any idea what it's like to be a hypersexual person who gets cheated on? It's like what? You were complaining about how much I wanted, but you went out and found it elsewhere? My first husband actually told me that it was because I was putting too much pressure on him. And it made him want to be in a relationship with someone who wasn't as demanding. So, there's that fear. There's that being reflected back at me so that I could acknowledge it and heal it. This is why you look at what you are projecting onto other people as to behaviors you don't like. What behaviors are you seeing in others that are a reflection of your shadow? What behaviors are you seeing in yourself that are your shadow standing up and screaming, notice me, pay attention to me, heal me? It's very deep work and it is very hard. So, once you start identifying what your shadow is, then you get to start working on your strategy for how you are going to deal with your shadow. Now, your shadow side is the side of yourself that you ignore. It is your repressed side. It is the side you haven't dealt with. So the only way to start working with it is to welcome your shadow in and to integrate it into your personality. And it can be a very hard thing to look at this part of yourself that you subconsciously hate and say, I love you. You are deserving. You are worthy of being here. You are accepted. But that acceptance is the key, absolute key, to integrating that shadow into your whole personality. Not your fragmented personality that you've been living with, but the whole and complete you. Okay, so that's you know, the basics of shadow work. It does go much more in depth than that, but that's probably enough for getting you started. So, I'm Marna. Thank you for joining me with Twin Flame Detox.